is Wednesday, September 24th, 2014. And first of all, um, I would like to thank you for agreeing to do this interview for us for the project of Oral Narratives of Latinos in Ohio. And I wanted to ask uh, your full name, please. Alexandra Pagan. Okay. Uh, where were you born and where did you grow up? Okay. I was born in Atlantic City, New Jersey and moved here when I was three to Cleveland, Ohio. And I've been on the same street, not living, but working. Um, my parents worked on the street for over uh, 20 years now. And um, I've been, I'm a Cleveland girl. <laughs> okay. Great. Yes. Um, I know you were very young when you moved to Ohio, but can you um, tell me what it was growing up um, here in those first years of coming here? Sure. Um, and, and maybe if you can mention uh, in particular growing up as a Latina okay. here in this area. Mm -hmm. So um, especially this area here in Cleveland is very diverse, but mostly Latinos. You see a lot of Latinos here. Um, so I can say I, I wasn't in Puerto Rico, but I still grew up around my people. Mm -hmm. um, it's a home because so many you become so tight in the community. Um, people know you. You've been here so many years that even customers tend to become like family. And you know, you can all, especially Latinos, we have no problem speaking to each other, and you know, problem-wise and everything. So. Um, about the experiences in school, for example? Okay. Um, well, starting out, I went to a private school. Uh, Lutheran um, was the religion. And then um, growing up, we went into public school. And again, in this community, it was Luis Munoz Marin Middle School. Uh, then you have Lincoln West High School. I attended Rhodes um, High School. But um, again, so diverse, this area is so diverse, where I had Latinos, Americanos, um, African Americans, Chinese. Again, a lot of Latinos, yeah. yeah. Um, you speak Spanish? Yes. Uh, how was, how did you or your family make sure that you maintain the language? Uh, was it mainly at home or was it also in school? Well, when I was younger, I only knew Spanish till I got to school. Once I started school is when I tried um, mostly to learn English to communicate with the kids at school. So that was like kindergarten, first grade. Then you kind of forget your language a little bit. But me being working with Latinos in the community that I've kept you know my language and professional wise I can talk the language it's just still a little hard certain words to um, you know in English it's a little bit easier for me still because it's I don't want to say my first language but it's they're right neck and neck because we use them both equal um, at home we only speak Spanish with the parents you know especially with older um, family members um, my son you know gets taken care of by a god my sister's godmother and my son knows both languages his numbers letters both English and Spanish and he's only two um, being exposed to both languages is a great benefit yes um. Uh, your um, family, your background is Puerto Rican. Yes. Right? Uh, what uh, traditions or or uh, songs, stories um, have been part of your family as a as a Puerto Rican growing okay. up? Okay. Um, so here, growing up, um, my dad is a very traditional Puerto Rican father. Mm -hmm. um, he loves parrandas. Mm -hmm. He loves um, mm -hmm. when the Puerto Rican comes he's like he likes rumbones mm -hmm. you know um, I grew up um, with a dance group called Cultura Unida which I was um, it was a church based dance group but we tried to focus on all the traditions of different I had Mexicans Salvadoreños Hondureñas mm -hmm. so we we did typical dances from all the countries so it's something that I'm very familiar with my sweet 15 was actually um, folklorico oh. so yes very <laughs> very root um, based um, but every year we never fail around Christmas time we have even if it's just our family my mom will bring out the instruments and we play and entre familia como uno dice 
Puerto Rican parade time comes and we're right next door. My dad will host a rumbong and all his friends will come with the congas and everything and play. So music wise, we I'm very aware of my roots. Yes. Great. Yes. Um, you mentioned Sweet 15? Mm -hmm. Quinceañera? Quinceañera. Okay, so you did a Quinceañera. Yes. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yes. Um, quinceañeros are very big in our culture. We don't celebrate the Sweet 16. Um, it's the it's basically the same thing as the Sweet 16 to where um, a young girl is introduced to womanhood um, in a sense. Um, Mines literally was um, dresses made for bomba en plena. Uh, the guys wore guayaveras and the uh, gorritos. Uh, we danced punta. I'm sorry, punta sondureño. Um, we danced bomba en plena, um, salsa. We did a little bit of merengue. Um, so it was definitely very traditional. Yes. What are some of those, like in La Quinceañera, uh, different countries have different sort of ceremonies that yes. go along. Um, obviously yours was very like Puerto Rican music and yes. essence. Is there anything else that happens in La Quinceañera? Oh, they do the, the changing of the shoes where the girl wears slippers and then you change into heels. Um, the passing down of your crown, so you pass your crown to the next um, young lady in your family that'll turn 15. Those are two. Um, we did um, a rose ceremony to where everyone that participated in my Sweet 15 handed me a rose. At the end, I gave it to a person of honor to me, which was my mother. Mm -hmm. And we also do the candlelight ceremony to where um, special people that have guided you through your 15 years of life mm -hmm. light a candle in honor, you know, of the night. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's very memorable. Mm -hmm. A lot Great. of stuff. Great. Um, do you have uh, sisters that have also done this? Yes. Okay. I okay. do have one younger sister. And did they choose a different theme? Uh, yes, hers was actually Phantom of the Opera. That that was her thing back when she was 15. Um, but again, it's so much work and so it's all for one night, but it's so fun. Again, she did the crown and she did the shoes. Um, she's a non-traditional, so hers was way different than mine's. Mm -hmm. But yes, a good time too, also. Um, thinking about those celebrations uh, like quinceañeras or other celebrations that are you would say Puerto Rican uh, in what ways uh, has has it been uh, a point of uh, experience for other people for example not just Puerto Ricans but maybe Anglos or yes uh, um, well like uh, I'm now um, how do I say Soy comprometida, mm -hmm. and my fiancé is moreno. Mm -hmm. So when we first had our son, we didn't know if we were having a boy or a girl. Mm -hmm. And he, the first thing I remember him telling me, if we have a girl, we're not spending all that money on a sweet 15. And I'm like, it's tradition. Mm -hmm. uh, like another thing that's tradition for us is baptism. Mm -hmm you get the child either baptized within the first few months or at his first birthday. And that's another problem we have because he's Baptist and they baptize when they're older. So with having a mixed culture, there's a lot of things that are done differently. Um, per se, my sweet 15, I didn't really invite too many friends because it was mostly my parents' friends and stuff like that and we kept it very traditional. But the few friends that I did have were like, what is this? What it's like a wedding. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So yes. Right, good. Um, what are some of your first memories of being in the state? For me, I I say most of my childhood did take place on the street. My parents both hardworking parents, they worked all day, six days a week. Only day we got off was Sunday and that was for church. Mm -hmm. Um with them working the long hours, I would go to school and come to their job for the rest of the day. So, like, even um, it was me and two others where their parents both worked with my parents. My mom was a hairstylist, so it was all day at the beauty shop. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were raised there, you know. We call this home because, yes, we have another place we call home, but this is basically it. Um, we had our fun there. We had our own little room in the beauty shop, you know, so it was... Yeah, that's it. <laughs> great. great. Uh, what 
um, you mentioned businesses, so your parents have had two businesses. Mm -hmm. um, have you had um, other jobs or have you worked mostly within them? I did have a few other jobs that I did in the food industry and all that, but um, my dad instilled in me since we were very young that no one will treat your stuff like you're like the owner like you and it's something that he's both my parents have worked so hard to own something that they want to pass it down to their children and uh, unfortunately the beauty shop wasn't for me um the jewelry industry was mm -hmm. you know and my dad can leave well, he le when I was 19, he left the business for one full year. He didn't. He kind of gave up on me for a little bit, mm -hmm. and I had to take you know take charge. And the shop was mine for a whole year. And um, he'd call every once in a while to check up and make sure everything was okay. But but now, thank God, he's back and you know he's with me again. And um, but no one treats you, your business like you will. All your customers. Um, as long as you treat them like family, they, you know, they come back and they, they like the feel of, home, you know, a family-based business and, um, yeah. When did he start this okay. joyeria? Yes. Okay, so funny story. Um, when my mom worked at the barbershop, a beauty salon, he had one showcase in that barbershop and one repair room, which he still worked at a factory at the time, but when he got out, he went there. And he did that for about six years, and that was in probably like 94, 95. Mm -hmm. 2001, we opened our first Joyeria Viejo San Juan. Mm -hmm. Which we've been blessed, we've been there for 13 years. Um, he did have the chance to open one up back home in Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. uh, and then it got a little hard managing too, so we, we downsized to one again. But um, yeah. Where, where did this interest for joyeria come from? <laughs> Another one. Um, it was actually passed down. Um, my grandmother, his mom, uh, had a jewelry shop in Puerto Rico, which is the one he repurchased a few years ago. Um, hers was in front of a, a middle school, and she sold jewelry, also did school supplies. So it was a mix of everything in her store. and. He, she always definitely passed down her contacts to her son, so then that became his passion. He went to school and got um, his degree for um, jewelry repair and um, diamonds and all that. So, um, so it's been passed down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are Are you knowledgeable? Or? I do repairs. I didn't go to school yet. It is in the future plans, um, but I I definitely through watching him over the years I learned a lot. So I say he's my teacher. Yeah. yeah. yeah absolutely. <laughs> Um, you mentioned that you have a son. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you think this, uh, your culture, and you know, how do you see him growing up, um, in instilling that in him? All right. And me and my father, we talk about this a lot because I feel that with passing generations, a lot of our traditions have died down. Um, more so now you feel a lot of um, Latinos will, will be like, uh, that's hibaro, you know, no, we're not in that time no more, we're modern. But then you have, you need a sense of also holding on to those traditions mm -hmm. uh, because if we don't, who, you know, our kids won't get to see them. So yes, um, when it becomes, like I said, Christmas time, I'm, my fiance, of course, doesn't want to partake in it because that's not his thing. But as far as my son, I try and involve him in everything and let him experience the music and I make sure he likes to dance salsa. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, um, and as far as the language, that's very important to me because bilingual is the best. Mm -hmm. Yes, more than one language is amazing. Mm -hmm. Great, great. Um, okay. I know this is this might be hard, but um, who's the most important person in your life, and and can you tell me a little bit more about? Oh wow! Him, him her, or them? Okay. Wow. Most important person in my life. Um, kind of a tug of war between my mom and my dad because they are my backbone, but I'd have to go with my mom. Um, it's 
sometimes it's harder to open up to her than it is to my father because he's more calm. A, a Latina woman's a little bit more aggressive. <laughs> um, but she definitely has my back no matter what. I, Even though like some things are harder to open up to, once I get over that barrier and open up, she's always supportive, always. Um, I can't say she's ever turned her back on me. Um, and I see that a lot in different cultures that once the kid turns 18 or some uh, Los Americanos are a little bit different, they kind of like, okay, now it's your turn, bye, you know. And as far as me, yes, I moved out and yes, at 18, I, you know, uh, now I have my family, but every evening I end up at my mother's like, hi mom, what are you doing? <laughs> that's home. <laughs> Um, what have been some of the happiest times and some of the most difficult times of okay. living here in this area? Okay, um, happiest times would, wow, I enjoy so many. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love Christmas time here. Mm -hmm. um, but I also love summer here. Mm -hmm. uh, there, and a lot of people, I want to say, kind of down talk on Cleveland. Um, boring city, or there's nothing to do. But honestly, if you step outside the box, there's a lot to do. Yes, a lot of it involves having some money and going out and spending it, but there's so much to do here. Um, I would have to say happiest times, and just because culture-wise would have to be around summer when we have our parade. Mm -hmm. um, my dad is what brings the joy out. Like, he is so, like, un rumbón, vamos a hacerlo aquí, you know? So that really brings a sense of happiness to me. Um, and Christmas time, I just love Christmas music and all that. Even Spanish or English, I enjoy it both. Um, and saddest. I would have to say with, um, unfortunately, with the crime and everything, um, when you hear stuff like the girls that were taken or um, deaths, um, people getting killed when they have kids at home and stuff like that, or you go out to have a good time and your life gets cut short because someone's being ruthless, um, definitely that's something that needs to get taken care of because it, it's very unfortunate that you can't, sometimes you have to be aware of your surroundings and where you step foot in, you know, that, that is definitely one of the worst. Um. What are some of the stories from your parents' uh, youth or when they got married or something like that that you like to hear the most? Hmm. Hmm. So I know my mom always tells, like, we're not girly girls. Um, I don't want to say a tomboy either, but we're rough when we have to be. And that's one thing my mom always like, um, let's say there's some heavy furniture that needs to get moved. We don't wait for the man to do it. We just, come on, mom, let's do this, you know? And that's one thing she always says, like, ah, eso lo sacaste de tu madre, you know? Um, she's so um, independent. Oh my God, we got that from her. Me and my sister both wait till you meet her. Um, uh, from her childhood, she always talks about how she used to climb the trees in Puerto Rico and skateboard and basketball and baseball. She was very good at baseball too. Um, but my mom's very hardworking. Um, and when they met, when my parents met, um, my grandma owned the jewelry store. My mom was actually her employee for some time, and that's where the, the love kindled. <laughs> um, wow! Yeah, you got me on that one. <laughs> Yes. Um, do you work, well, you said a lot of your clients are Latinos. Right? Yes. Um, and I assume recent and long-time immigrants, is that, would you say, or is it mostly long-time Most, uh, mo in this area, most time, um, it's long a long time immigrants, yes. Uh, you do occasionally get your new ones in, and they'll, s in, just because of the name on the building, you know, they'll stop in. I por fin consigo un Puerto Riqueño. <laughs> Tell me, where do I get food? Tell me, where do I uh, go shopping? You know, so we do get that a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and 
that's one of the good things about this area. We can, I can direct you towards food. I can direct you towards botanicas, whatever you're looking for. There's definitely in this area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, what if you had to give uh, advice to immigrants uh, or Latinos in this area? What would you tell them? What What do you think is important for them to do or to know? Um. Just because in the recent years, I, um, I've i had two employees that are from Mexico, and it's brought a lot more awareness to me of their struggles. Um, you know, Puerto Ricans are blessed to be part of the United States where we don't have that immigration problem. But um, it's sad to say, but that they're scared of the law they're scared of um adventuring because you know they might get caught or a family member or whatever it, the cause may be you know look for a better future if you came here um if you're here definitely go for it there's so much here and in, in, you know just in ohio there's help you know you can and, and once you know how do i say um don't let don't let that barrier stop you. It's possible, and if it's for you, if it's for the kids, uh, whatever your goal is, go for it. You can get an education. You can learn the language. It's never too late. Um, and there's so much room for progress here. Um, definitely, there's hands down. Yeah, great. Um, what does Ohio mean to you? Ohio's home. Um, I can travel. And after a week or two, take me home. <laughs> okay, I love my island of Puerto Rico. It is amazing, mm -hmm. but after day twelve, I'm take me home. Mm -hmm. This is my home. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Oh, great, great. Um, what message would you like to give to your kids, grandkids, great grandkids? So, you in the future, what would you like them to know? First, let's say don't take your mother for granted. <laughs> um, no, definitely I'd, I'd say get your education, um, reach for the stars, how they say it sounds cliche, but definitely don't ever stop. You can disguise the limit. It definitely is. Um, seeing it from my sister. Um, I'm so proud of her. She's, you know, CSU student now, and it's it's amazing. She's like my kid. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there anything else you would like to tell us in this interview that I haven't asked? Um, I guess I would close it by saying um, Latinos here in Cleveland are very orgullosos, um, and we what's the word um como yeah como connect and nosotros um we relate to one another so i i've seen that um cuando hay una bandera oh we're both oh we're puerto rican we're in the same spot you know so um we definitely stick together, Latinos stick together, whether it's Puerto Rican, Mexican or not. When we're in a situation or when we're in a place and you only see one other, you're like, yeah, we're, you know, it's us, don't worry, we got your back, you know. So I definitely say that we are, um, we are proud, we are a great community, um, and I believe we have the power. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you very much. Thanks.